Hi, I appreciate you joining me for another segment of A View into the Collection. I'm Amy, the Curator of Collections at the Indian Public Cultural Center, and today I will share with you some of the clay-formed canteens in our collection. In current times, the ubiquitous reusable water bottle makes its appearance on office desks, attached to backpacks, on a driver's passenger seat. It seems like they are everywhere. Though I don't want to steer too far from this segment's topic, it made sense to point out the significance of water as it relates to our world today. Often we are told to hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. That and with changes in our weather patterns, life in the desert southwest remains challenging. Now and way back when our ancestors roamed across the vast lands of the southwest, water remains a vital component to our survival. When out on a day hike, we have the option of hauling bottles of water in a backpack, or thankfully, we can now utilize a camelback. One wonders how our ancestors carried their canteens without hindrance or breaking them. Our ancestors formed rope or strap out of yucca fibers or sinew and leather from game animals to create a tump line. The tump line was then utilized as a method to carry a heavy load using the top of the carrier's head as a means of distributing weight while freeing one's hands. This technique is by no means specific only to our Pueblo ancestors. It is a standard across many cultures in our world. In an article by Pippa Biddle in The Atlantic, she says, quote, looking for the inventor of head carry devices and techniques is like asking who invented shoes. No single origin story exists for a piece of leather, fabric, or rope that is knotted, looped, or buckled around a load and worn across the top of the head. The tump line precedes even the backpack. It has been used across every populated continent." End quote. Many of the canteens in our collection are flat-backed canteens. By this I mean that the canteen has a flat side opposite the rounded protrusion. Some are more bulbous than others. In my research, I found it written that canteens with less of a protrusion were made to be sold to tourists. The more bulbous and larger canteens were used by our Pueblo people to store and carry water. A good example of the larger bulbous canteen is the red canteen from the Hopi tribe in Arizona. The bulbous belly and flat back is distinct from the noticeably smaller flat back canteens from the Rio Grande Pueblos. An informative online exhibit at Arizona State Museum states that these canteens, quote, appear in the 1500s and were based on a Spanish canteen style that likely first was adapted by New Mexico Pueblo potters. By the 1870s, canteens of different sizes were being made for sale, end quote. In this online exhibit and in other research materials, the functionality and use of items such as canteens changed when tourists and visitors reached the Southwest. Many wanted to take something similar yet smaller back home with them. Pueblo potters responded by creating smaller examples and as we know, a very lucrative venture which persists today. In the reference book titled Historic Hopi Ceramics, Edwin Wade and Leah McChesney write, quote, the commercialization of Hopi ceramics began sometime in the 1880s. Classes of objects, bowls, ladles, cups, and tiles show signs of mass production. Designs became limited and standardized. Vessels were miniaturized and ornamentation was more important than function, end quote. It should be noted that many of these ceramics show no signs of use or wear. A second example of an older canteen is the very round canteen painted with a lovely bird on its belly. The flat bottom is not easily noticed as it is not as substantial as the protruding areas, which leads one to wonder how such a canteen is made. A couple of sources mention different ways canteens are built. 
One involves attaching two equal bowl shapes together called looting. This creates a more symmetrical canteen. If the canteen is built from the base up to the rim, this results in an off-center spout. Another technique involves using the coil method, where ropes of clay are added from the flat back to build the rounded dome. In a paper written by Christina Whitney titled On the Origins of Flat-Backed Canteens in the American Southwest, she provides drawings and images to depict the different ways canteens are constructed. I found it fascinating that a boroscope was used to capture images of the interior of intact canteens. This allowed her to determine the method of construction. To compare the Hopi and Acoma canteens after learning about the different construction methods, something which was once a mystery makes a bit more sense. In stark contrast to the large canteens is this delicately crafted Acoma canteen by Sharon and Bernard Lewis. Wow, displaying a smooth polish, a perfectly rounded body, and a checkerboard design and multiple colored slips, it continues to wow us with the addition of two three-dimensional lizards. I love the overall effect and it weighs almost nothing. Sharon created this canteen when she was married to Bernard Lewis. Sharon's distinctive style shines here with the beautifully formed, thin-walled, and delicately painted canteen. On the Wheelwright Museum of the American Indian website, Sharon says, quote, The painting is what I love most because you can become really creative. Sometimes I dream of designs, end quote. A Laguna potter named Rose Chino created a canteen painted with two birds with feather designs on the belly. The two handles are twisted and almost look like rope. She signed this one with her name and added, quote, of Laguna, end quote. There is a Rose Chino from the Pueblo of Acoma, and when I began to search for Rose Chino from Laguna Pueblo, information about the Acoma potter was all I could find. She chose to flatten two sides of her canteen, the side opposite the belly and the side opposite the spout. I love the simplicity of the shape and design, and I wonder if she made it with someone in mind. At times, it is difficult to distinguish between the polychrome vessels made at Acoma and Laguna. Their villages are located in close proximity. Moving on to our next canteen, this is a polished black canteen with a three-dimensional turtle straddled on its belly, topped off with a red painted wood cork. Etched on the bottom is the name Juanita. The tricky part is identifying this particular Juanita. I searched for works signed by Juanita and found three possibilities. Suffice it to say, I cannot say with certainty who created this solid work with a fantastic polished sheen. It feels great in my hands and I love the small wooden cork and turtle figure. Of the canteens in our collection, it stands alone in its wonderfully polished black sheen. A double canteen painted with multiple bighorn sheep and deer figures displays the potter's expertise. Santo Domingo Pueblo potter Robert Tenorio created this wonderful double-lobed canteen. A master potter, Tenorio's creativity shines through with his well-balanced creation. The bighorn sheep and deer are painted meticulously with geometric designs that carry symbols for clouds, rain, and mountains. And each side is enhanced with floral elements. Standard cork stoppers were used in each spout. Tenorio also crafted the miniature double-lobed canteen. On it, he painted a deer, bird, bighorn sheep, and yucca plants. The double-lobed canteen could speak to the dualities in nature, male and female, moisture on the land from a rain, or dusty dry dirt from a lack of rain. The spouts emerge in opposing directions, while the sturdy bridge and handle between the two lobes 
add another visually captivating dimension. The black vegetal paints are produced from boiling down the Rocky Mountain bee plant or wild spinach. Robert Sister's equally captivating canteen is formed in a pleasing shape and painted with a vibrant pinwheel design. Though she often worked with her husband, Arthur, she signed this canteen, Hilda Corice. Both Hilda and Arthur learned pottery making and painting skills by working alongside Robert. Evidence of his teachings is present in Hilda's canteen. What prompts a potter to choose certain design elements? As I studied each canteen, Helen Gachapin's piece caught my eye with its single bird figure on top of two curvilinear designs. The highly polished red slip surrounding the black on cream color on the canteen's belly provides the perfect frame. Oftentimes, potters paint symbols for water, rain, and rain clouds, or amphibian figures like frogs onto their canteens. This makes sense for a vessel meant to hold and transport water. That said, Helen chose to paint a roadrunner on hers. This Zia bird figure appears on different types of pottery vessels made by Zia Pueblo potters. Helen learned her craft from her mother, Andrea Toribio Gachupin, she signed her name on the backside. Finally, I chose this smaller interpretation of a canteen made by Isleta Pueblo potter, Chris Teller. Chris is one of four daughters of the well-known potter, Stella Teller. The body of the vessel is formed like a canteen with an oval-shaped spout and two twisted handles. The difference here is her use of children hanging around the rim of what could be a local watering hole. I liken it to a natural spring or well where community members meet for getting water for drinking. It's playful and her white slip base with details in dark brown and red add to the joy. Their faces and gestures provide movement as if they are in the middle of singing a song. Each canteen is unique to its creator each creation emanates a cohesive, intentional energy to add beauty and a practical means for transporting water. Though most of the canteens in our collection were made for purchase by collectors, the threads leading back to those earlier and highly functional vessels remain intact. The long history of forming vessels out of the gifts provided by the earth is maintained by our living potters. From plain wares to highly decorative works in clay, the basic form persists to this day. I am grateful to share some of these water carrying vessels with you. I hope this look at a selection of water carrying vessels is a reminder to stay hydrated, stay hydrated and will add something new to think about when sipping water out of your favorite water bottle. See you next time.